Welcome. We're going to look at probably the most common type of emission sensor. It is the infamous O2 sensor. At its root it is a very simple sensor that indicates how much oxygen is present. Sounds fairly straightforward, right? Well, put it in an environment that has a multitude of other strange gases and significant rushing airflow at over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, you have a hot mess on your hands. The sensor in an automotive environment is located in the exhaust system. In the early stages of controlled fuel delivery, there was usually one sensor. It was placed after the converter and it sensed oxygen when the catalytic process was complete. This was appropriate for these systems since they were only eliminating hydrocarbons at the time. Today, the tasks are much greater. Systems not only reduce hydrocarbons, but NOx gases must also be reduced. Converters are now two-stage and part of the processes are removing oxygen molecules and in another step, we are adding oxygen molecules back in. To accomplish this, the system now needs two sensors. These are placed upstream and downstream in the exhaust or before and after the converter. The result is a much safer tailpipe emission for all of us. Most sensors are housed in stainless steel and then have ceramic structure with either platinum or palladium elements within them. These elements cause a chemical reaction within the sensor that produces a voltage that is usually in the millivolt range. This voltage is then read by the engine control modules and adjustments can be made to fuel delivery to keep emissions in range. This is a very harsh environment and the heat ranges are over a thousand degrees. Additionally, they are under the vehicle and subject to weather and atmospheric changes. Consequently, when the time comes for replacement, these sensors can be exceedingly difficult to get at and to remove. You can assist your customer with tools that assist in their removal. Heat is an obvious help in removal. Inductive heating tools can loosen these from the exhaust bump. Special sockets and specialized angle tools are also made to allow the wire to remain while attempting removal. Many times sensors break or fracture and drilling can be required. In this case, a good tap in the proper size is required. Even if the sensor removes easily, it is always a good idea to chase the threads for insertion of the new sensor. It is particularly important for the correct sensor to be used for a specific application. The correct calibration can affect the operation of the emission systems, and if not calibrated correctly, can cause the check engine light to come back on. This is the last thing your customer wants after replacing the sensor. That's all for today, and thank you for being with us.